Okay, so um, welcome back again. And um, this is more like a continuation um, the video which we had recorded on Apache Tomcat. And um, uh, as you can see, we still maintain our initial access. Uh, we want to see how we can maybe exploit other services on this box like Jenkins, which is something which we know is used for automation uh, for CI CD um, dev environment. So, but let's probably try to maybe take this shell and make it a meta uh, normal shell which we got from Netcat meta -preda. So I set up meta exploits and um, I searched for this um, post module shell to meta -preda. So I'm just going to copy this and uh, use this um, options. Oh, sorry um, we have to set that session so it's session one initially which is the shell uh, L host I'm gonna use my ETH0 then L port is 4433 I'm gonna run this and see if we can upgrade that basic that shell to meta predator session if that works, then we will see how we can take that up to exploiting other services on the box. So um, our upgrade did work, and um, you can see that send in the stage. Then also we got um, session two, which is the meta product session, as you can see here. Great. So moving on from this point, um, can I clear the screen? Great. Let's see. Let's fall back to the application. I think we can see here the Apache Foundation and all this stuff. Um, we can see there is this axis too. There is a meta exploit module for this. If we click this up, uh, let's see if we can access that service. Great, it's here. Uh, we can see there's an administration. We could take uh, maybe a meta exploit module to brute force this, uh, but I think I would rather go for an exploit module in meta exploit. So let's such this particular exploit module i think it exploits a uh, multi-http axis let's search for um axis axis2 let's see okay great there goes the module so i'm going to go for the exploits module i'm, I'm just showcasing how you can take your initial access and probably look for the possible services on the uh, server to exploit in and um, probably gaining that level of persistence which you want. So I'm going to use this module. Um, okay, so we're using the Java Meta Preda as our payload here. I think I'm pretty much fine with that. So let's set the arrow host to um, the Windows Server IP, which is dot ten. So it's one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one one zero then I think that's pretty much fine. The port is 82. If I see options, the port should be 8282. So let's set, um, uh, I'm going to change this to 8282 because that thing is listening on 8282 for my verification here. So let's set our port 8282. Then I think that's pretty much it. Let's run this to see if we can probably grab, oh great, successful. So um, we can see that credential thing they have in there. So it didn't even waste time, it brought forced found the credential. We can take this credential and go authenticate on that page which you saw. Maybe that will work for us. I'm just gonna verify. Admin access to, um, just a quick verification, okay. I'm going to log in and see if that's the default. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, that happens to be the default credential, and we're able to just log in. From here, we can create a user admin, user, and all the stuff. But Metasploit already exploited, and we got a third session. So I'm going to background this. Um, if I do the sessions, tag L, we see we've got three sessions now. I'm just going to drag this up for that screen real estate thing there. Okay, great. So from this point, what other service can we exploit on this box? What else can we do to maybe maintain that persistence which we want to maintain? 
So looking back at this again, we can see there is a, it seems to be a bunch of stocks happening here. There is this Struts. Uh, I'm just going to click on Struts. Uh, we cannot access tonight. Okay, uh, pretty much cool. Thank you. Okay, but let's go search for a better split module, which can we can use to attempt to exploit this service again. So we're going to search for Struts and see if we can use Struts. So we're going to look for search for S C R U C S. Let's see. Uh, there seems to be a handful of them, and you can see the ranking are pretty much excellent for most of them. But we're going to go for the exploits uh, multi HTTP. I think we're just going to use the Struts DMI resets. Let's see if that thing will work for us. Um, there's a code exec exception delegator here. DMI reset exec. So I'm going to try this one. Okay, well, we can see it's remote code and you can see the ranking is excellent. So let's use this exploits. Then what we're going to do is set the real host. I could use set G to set that, but I don't want to do that. So let's use set G, uh, set remote host 192.168.0.110. Then we'll set the ports to um, 8282 still. Uh, we see, let's see options. Um, okay, it looks pretty cool, but 4444 is already busy, so I'm going to change L port to 4646. Let me run this and see um, if I'll be able to exploit that service, send in the stage. Um, we'll see if it exploits it. If it does, we should get another shell or another another pretty shell, which means we are maintaining all that having multiple shells now we can start taking the shells analyzing them then maybe creating users or hiding processes more like uh, 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 setting up task schedulers to to call back to us we got another session i'm just going to background this again uh, um, this can go on and on because as we can as we had seen this is a windows server with lots of services for my mmap scan you can see a ton load of them and um, we can just take as many as we want to and keep trying this but let's see what comes next so already we've got four sessions and i want to go after um, a particular service jenkins so as we do know Jenkins is pretty much that uh, uh, um, service which we find that helps us to do automation uh, and is written in Java. And uh, beyond that, it helps us to automate a non-human or those part of the processes in the pipeline that seem to be ambiguous for humans to handle. So as part of the software development lifecycle process, um, which uh, uh, we know includes the continuous integration continuous the CICD, what they call probably. Uh, Jenkins is one of those applications that helps to facilitate, facilitate or more like enhance the technical aspect of these whole pipelines. So we're going to see how we can maybe exploit Jenkins. Already we, we have to authenticate. But since we have a session, why not us maybe take one of our sessions and try to see if we can read the credentials stored on that server for Jenkins. So I'm just going to use, uh, let's see, um, let me use session 2, tag I2, let me interrupt to session 2. So let's see if we can look for that file. I'm going to cut, it should be in the C, uh, remember this is metaprida, so I'm going to use a double, um, uh, is that a backslash, or forward slash, or whatever, <laughs> windows, W I N D O W S. So we're going for the service. We know it should be in the service profiles. If it's on a Linux environment, it's in a different location, but slightly similar. Local service. Okay. Then we know it's going to be in dot Jenkins. K I N S. Then we want to go for the secrets. Then we want to go for the initial admin 
password so let's see if we can maybe cut out this content mm. okay uh, I know what this is <laughs> uh, okay okay um, a second uh, um, let's see if we can migrate uh, process uh, I see local authority is a thing here already so I'm just gonna go for maybe use the old way to do that let's see if we can migrate that process okay then I'm going to try to run that command again um, okay this is not lines mm, okay so what can we do what can we do just thinking out loud <laughs> uh, okay so um, what, what I simply did was I see there's something wrong with this and I couldn't try to get system to solve this problem or more like set that uh, um, standard API the API thing for this meta product thing. I'm not sure why. Then I'm, you, oh, okay, I don't have a paid version here. So I dropped into a shell, then I went all the way to that directory, and this is it here. Um, if I dir here, we can see a couple of useful stuff. There is the master key, there is, um, we're looking for the initial uh, um, password. I don't seem to uh, be seeing that file in here which is quite worrisome so well, let me just try to type it maybe it's hidden or something uh, I'm going to type um, for uh, initial um, admin password uh, okay so obviously there is um, nothing like that there okay so let's see there seem to be these hidden directories here mm. full path view there's hooks on it's a secret okay can I look at this and see uh, type Okay, that seems to be encrypted pretty much cool. <laughs> okay, so there seem to be some challenges with the uh, Jenkins service. So what we're doing is we're adding a back door uh, user, or we call this a front door. <laughs> and um, we added that user. Then we added, I tried to add to local ad administrator, but I think this computer belongs to a domain, so it didn't allow me to do that. Probably it's been disabled by the configuration. So I had to try to add to domain admins and that worked out perfectly. So I added the user to domain admin and that user is in domain admin now. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, thinking out loud on what to add to this video before I probably end it. I decided to try to crack my best X in some of my tally box and um, I'm using a little trick to um, from my back first back door or front door user <laughs> I'm trying to add the next user administrator um, to the domain and um, I ran that basically we can see it got um, pretty much cool details back at us and we can see the administrator name you can see the more like enumerating that user administrator and we can see pretty much details password expire um, sets now this is enumeration uh, um, I'm trying to understand uh, what configuration had been set for an admin account in this domain and um, crap map exec is able to get me some cool details showing me how the admin user had been configured the password expiration period more like general password policy then the groups we can see the local group membership administrator global group membership we can see where that administrator user is at the global level which is the domain level then domain non uh, that's giving us that list as well and it pretty much 
cool other cool stuff you can see other groups like enterprise admin schema admin domain admins now this is giving me hints i can take this i know there's enterprise admin maybe i can carry my um my regular <laughs> backdoor user and try to maybe execute some funny add myself to all these cool groups so i can do like next uh user uh um, sorry, Nets group. So I know there's enterprise admin. So let me see if I can add my front door <laughs> user to that group. Uh, this is persistent. Now you can see I'm able to do that without stress. I can as well look for other important group here. Maybe I'm already in domain admin, maybe schema admin, that's pretty dangerous to, to do, but I'm going to just emulate that and see. Uh, net group, that should be locked down. Um, if I'm able to add myself there, then I can do some very dangerous stuff. Um, front door, add. Okay, that works pretty much easy without stress. Okay, well, I'm just showcasing how dangerous it is from initial access to doing some core enumeration, like you see me using crack map exec here. There are a bunch of other modules, Mimikat module in crack map exec. You've got some other very cool SMB modules like the zero logon thing, the 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 Petpotam stuff. There are quite a bunch of them that you can take. You can even more like do some past the hash attack with this stuff. Trust me, you can dump the entire SAM. Let me try that if it's going to work. Maybe if I can, if I can dump the entire SAM database, I'm going to kill this and try to see if I can use crap map exec to dump the SAM. I think all I need to do is pass this and in the password, then the local odds. Then I'm going to just do SAM here. If it's gonna work, if it doesn't work, I'm gonna stop this video here, anyways. Well, that failed. Uh, I'm sure pretty much it has to do with the user. Maybe I haven't actually got it myself to the group because you can see here it's trying that as my front door user that can execute such a uh, command. But trust me, uh, uh, at the local level, I may not be able to dump this, but maybe at the domain level, I should be able to dump the sound if I wanna do that. Well, I'm going to stop this video here. Um, I pretty much showcased a whole lot of <laughs> cool stuff. Uh, I believe uh, maybe the next one I'll drill a bit more deeper into crap map exec and showcasing how we can take a normal user, which we had created as a back door, front door, whatever, and go deep into the domain and pull out, maybe dump the entire database, the NT, uh, 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 NTDS stuff, the dates and um, see maybe you can export that uh, to a local uh, local server and try to unwrap it to probably own the whole domain that would be pretty cool to show so um, thanks for sticking around once again and i hope you like the content please do like and subscribe and then um, see you soon again bye